Zalcori became approved by the FDA in fast time. I mean, I think that was a real point of encouragement to everybody in the lung cancer community. It, it should be, because... I know this date. <laughs> August 23rd, 2011. Is the, I think the fastest... That was when my second um, daughter was born. <laughs> I, I think it was the fastest, actually, from target discovery to uh, FDA-approved uh, therapy in the history of cancer entirely, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's very believable. I mean, this was... And it was an approval based on... A, this was based on the single arm study, right? I mean, from the phase one and phase two. Phase one and phase studies. two, and uh, but I, I, I was just talking with someone from FDA, and you know, to their credit, even though the model has historically been large phase three randomized trials of a few hundred people on this versus a few hundred people on the other, seeing response rates over fifty percent that are lasting nine or ten months blew out, you know, blew the competition out of the water. And, and it was so compelling that it led to fast <coughs> approval and therefore access to lots of people who needed them who couldn't necessarily go to one of the few centers that were, were doing this work. So I think that was a feather in the cap of the whole system. Yeah, there was some, as, as you know, there's a professor in Paris called Jean-Charles Sorier who in Europe they insisted on a randomized study. Well, the FDA also insisted on it, but it was a, as kind of a conditional event later down the line. But the Europeans wouldn't approve the drug until they saw a result of a study comparing crizotinib to chemotherapy. And he stood up at a conference and he said, I'm going to murder the French accent at this point. But he <laughs> said, he said you, America treats whilst Europe randomizes. I didn't even do the French accent. No. <laughs> you really America did. treats and Europe <laughs> randomizes. Oh, pretty good. <laughs> That was Pepe Le Pew. Like <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that, well, but there's other ways that they lead. They're, they're doing biomarkers for yeah. that, so that's good. Um, so what are the limitations of Zalcori, whether it's side effects or efficacy? I could ask you guys, too, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but any of you want to comment? Um, <clears throat> I guess the main limitation of Zalcori is that at some point, patients um, generally will develop resistance, and that's why it's been a focus of, of our research um, for, for quite a few years, actually. Um, cancer cells are able to sort of figure out uh, these, these therapies and uh, develop different ways um, of, of becoming resistant. Um, so I think that's a, a big limitation. As you heard, the av approximate average time of response is you know, in the nine-month range, although certainly we have patients now who have been on over five years um, from 2008, October 2008. Um, so we can certainly see very long durations of response, but by and large, most patients will start to develop resistance in that you know, nine to 10 month uh, time frame. And we'll talk more about the whole concept of resistance in a bit. Did you have anything you want to add? Well, so resistance falls into two broad categories. So one is when you're progressing in the body and really the biology of the cancer has changed. Uh, and the other, as we heard mentioned earlier, is Sometimes you progress in the brain, and really we think that's actually because the drug's not getting in there or not getting in there enough in most people. So there, there are two different mechanisms whereby crizotinib fails the patients who are on it. Right. So Ross is kind of highlighting, I guess, another limitation, which is the, the problem with relapses in, in the brain. And I think some of you had mentioned how you didn't realize that crizotinib doesn't have activity in the brain. It, in fact, does have a little bit of activity, and um, we've been looking at this um, in some of the ongoing crizotinib studies, and we've seen some patients who actually do have responses in the brain, or at least stabilization of lesions in the brain, that, but the problem is they don't tend to be that durable responses. And as we've been sort of alluding to, patients will sometimes relapse, um, and actually Ross has looked at this quite frequently um, in the brain um, on crizotinib. Uh, 